Amen. At this time, we are going to have uh, one who is no stranger to us, uh, one who was born in this church and grew up in this church and went off to college and has come back home to speak to our graduates. This morning, I have none other uh, the privilege of introducing to you uh, one who we know loves the Lord and one who has uh, done well, has matured well, and has become a graceful, beautiful young woman. Please, for our occasion, Miss Imani Sanders. Do I hold this? It's up to you. Okay. Yeah, I will. Okay. Hey, guys. Hello, Turner. It's been a while since I was up here on this pulpit, and I want to thank Miss Nina and Mr. Wynn, our pastors, in addition to my youth pastor, Reverend Don, for this incredible opportunity to come up here once again. To all the parents, godparents, grandparents, and caretakers of the graduates, to you I say congratulations first, for I know for a fact that it has been a journey, so congratulations to you guys. And to the class of 2018, I say get ready to embark on all of life's incredible wonders. I can distinctly remember sitting in you guys' place. It was one of the most memorable days of my entire graduation weekend because everybody knew that walking the stage was cool, but walking this pulpit made it official. And as the celebrations, it did. But as the celebrations slowly died down, however, a different wave of emotions began to settle in. It was scary to move in such unfamiliar territory, from high school to college, from living with your parents to being relatively independent, for me, moving from the suburbs to Chocolate City, and I can recall people giving me two things, lots of money and lots of advice, both of which I still take. <laughs> yes. However, I, there is one thing that I think that nobody really told me. But first, like at Howard, we must begin everything with a history lesson. Before the National Monuments were built, Howard's clock tower was actually the tallest building in DC. And that's because our campus sits on a really big hill leading up to the highest altitude of the entire city. So as soon as you embark on this journey at Howard, we immediately call it the climb because our commencement ceremony takes place at the very top of this hill. And the mindset is that no matter how many times you make a mistake or you mess up, as long as you keep climbing, you're good. May 11th, I completed my climb and graduated with honors cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts from the Kathy Hughes School of Communications. Thank you. Within my four years, I joined a competition dance team, which I went on to coach for two years. I coordinated dance and step shows. I had internships in New York. I released film projects, won multiple awards, started my own blog, co-hosted a podcast, among a multitude of other things. However, what we're always so hesitant to discuss are the failures of our lives, though often it is the, lesson learned, the lessons learned from the failures that lead us to our greatest success. Within my first three months at Howard, I was denied from three organizations. From there, I overdrafted my account, Lord knows how many times. I failed four classes. One teacher in particular made me cry in her office. At one point, Howard had me with no housing. There's a woman in financial aid who I still want to smack to this day. <laughs> I went through four iPhones, and in almost every class, I would always bomb the first test. See, when I went to college, I thought I was going to get all A's. I was going to be extremely popular, go to church every Sunday. I had a scholarship, so financially I shouldn't have been broke. I'm beautiful, so I was going to find me a nice, educated black man, and life was going to be great. <laughs> However, <laughs> I quickly realized that life is hard. <laughs> life is difficult, and it can really, truly be a movie. Now, unfortunately, I read in the program that none of you guys will be climbing the hill of my alma mater. However, I can guarantee you that this journey you're about to take will be a climb of its own. Oftentimes, you're swinging, crying, or venting on the phone to your parents while making the climb. Sometimes you have to hold the hands of your friends or let their hands go as you're making the climb. Some people need water breaks and rest stops. There may be times where you're gracefully moving up only to get knocked back down to the bottom of the hill. 
Regardless, you have to remind yourself that there are people that sacrificed for you to be on the hill, that there was a time where your ancestors were denied access to the hill, that there were lives to touch, people to inspire, and jobs waiting for you at the top of the hill, and most importantly, that God's angels are surrounding you from the very first to the very last step on your journey up the hill. <laughs> Class of 2018, I'm here with a pretty unpopular message. I'm here to tell you that you're going to fail. I'm here to tell you that you're going to fall down a couple times and that if you're like me, you're gonna cry a lot on the phone to your mom. But when you do, please remember that it is okay. Charlemagne calls it divine misdirection, but in the words of Malcolm X, there is no better than adversity. For every defeat, every heartbreak, and every loss contains its own seed, its own lesson on how to pr improve your performance for the next time. Spotify genius and talent manager Troy Carter once told me to my face that the hardest discipline for us humans to understand is that every failure is not a curse. Most successful people feel like a, a fraud, he said, because they haven't done anything special, it feels like. All they did was keep going. The people who make it aren't the ones who did not fail. The people that make it are the ones who did not stop. My favorite... <laughs> My favorite Instagram influencer, Will Smith, once ranted, fail early, fail often, fail forward. You have to get comfortable with failure and learn to actually seek it because that's where adaptation and growth lie. You extract the lessons from failure and use it as energy and wisdom to come around to the next phase of success. Before you guys go off to school, I want you guys to actually sit down and talk to your parents. I want you to ask them how they got to where they are today how they acquired the Louis Vuitton bags and the Mercedes Benz, and even for some of them, how they acquired you. There are, no <laughs> there are no cheat codes, no life hacks or shortcuts to success. You have to expect the full spectrum of the human experience, including both ignorant and inspiring moments. And you guys, I tell you, are a very special group. You are special because number one, I'm telling you this now so that you can begin shaping yourself to effectively respond to change. Number two, you have a whole community of folks in this room who will love you despite any of your actions. Number three, you're black, which seems debatable, but that's privilege in its own right, in its own way. Because you have a because you have a spiritual force, not a systematic presence working in your favor. And number four, speaking of favor, you are a child of the Most High, the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of this earth, and the one who closes doors only because he's opening ones better for you down the road. So if you do fail your finals, if you gain some weight, if you don't graduate on time, if you stay single, if you lose your job, if you have a baby, if you take a year off, or whatever it may be, don't ever be too embarrassed or too ashamed to seek help and continue to grow. You live, you try again, and you continue forward. You are in the infancy of your evolution. And if your next four years are that of like mine, all of your good days will outweigh your bad days. And in the end, you will not complain. Congratulations, graduates.